don't desire that his word will bear fruit in every life in jesus name father we thank you for the bible study thank you for bringing us together thank you lord because your word is life and his spirit and when that word enters into us it will bear fruit the fruit of the spirit and we're asking you lord tonight that your word will so penetrate our heart and will so grieve our heart that we'll have the purpose the intention and the desire and the consecration that we live by that word without looking back without compromising and without unbelief in jesus name help us to have a wavering faith in the word a wavering focus on the word as well as on, on wavering fruit that, bear, that is born in our hearts and lives in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the Lagos church said, and in the global church we thought say, Amen. Thank you very much. You can see that we're coming to Daniel chapter 2. And in Daniel chapter 2 today, we're looking at verses 14 all through to 30. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2 verse 14. In verse 14 it says, Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay to kill, to terminate their lives, to kill and to stay, slay the wise men of Babylon. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, he answered and said unto Ariel, the king said, Captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? And then Ariel made the thing known to Daniel. In verse 16, it tells us, it said, Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time that he would show the king the interpretation. Remember that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, that had a dream, and he had forgotten the dream, and now he wanted the magicians and the astrologers and all those wise men of Babylon that they will come and reveal the forgotten dream. Not only reveal the forgotten dream, they will also give him the interpretation because he was frightened of the dream even though he had forgotten he still wanted to know the meaning of that dream that's why when those uh, magicians and astrologers and the wise men and the chaldeans could not interpret could not even find out the dream he decided because he was fearful because he was frightened a frightened man is a furious man it's an angry man and he felt okay maybe i'm going to die because of that a dream the revelation the meaning of that dream maybe it means i'm going to die before i die he wanted to just lay everybody and he sent the executioner out that they will they will kill all the wise men of Babylon and it happens to be that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were part of the wise men they had trained and they didn't know about all this so if they knew they would have prayed but then they now came to Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they said it's, it's time for you to go. You are going to die now because there is a decree from the king of Babylon that they will slay everyone. And then Daniel, look at Daniel. That will make somebody fearful, somebody frightened. That will make somebody say, the end has come and I'm not ready. And a decree had been passed. And so he, did, so he said, why, why the haste? Take me to the king and tell the king, I'm going to reveal the dream. He had not even prayed. And yet he was so confident he was going to reveal the dream and was going to give the interpretation. And then he came to the king. Look at the man that's about to die by the edict of Babylon. He was peaceful. 
he was calm and he spoke to the king in a peaceful manner that's the evidence that man was saved if he wasn't saved number one he'll be afraid of death if he wasn't saved and he wasn't sure of the connection he had with the lord in such a situation a peculiar situation he would have said what am i going to do i have that thing unsettled i have that thing unsettled am i going to meet god because i know without holiness no man shall save the lord the deal that in the old testament and then if we die now where do i spend eternity no question like like that that man had calmness that man had peace of mind it was a personal peace that he had the peace we have when we come to know the lord in salvation is not a communal peace it's not a, a you know a peace for the community it's a personal peace that we have and the daniel demonstrated that it was a perceived peace you could tell us uh, nicodney was that was sitting down there okay daniel what have you come to say i'm very calmly he said give me time and i will show the king the interpretation of his dream it was perceived the people that saw him could perceive that this man had personal peace this man had a perceived peace that you could see this man had a penetrating persuasive peace it, it penetrated into the heart of nebuchadnezzar that this man must be able to discover see him confidently and calmly that he's uh, telling me is going to reveal the dream the question is if we're truly born again personal if we're truly children of god when situations like that happen that we don't know what we can do and other people don't know what they're going to do do we still have that personal peace of the Lord? Think about that. A little problem and then we're jolted and we're beginning to talk in an erratic manner. The peace that comes with salvation is personal is perceived other people can see that you are not jilted you are not uh, you know kind of a uh, boss here and there and you are not harassed by your thoughts because the people can see this man this woman is truly born again in every situation in his life in her life she he has the peace and then it's a kind of penetrating persuasive peace when you talk you're not kind of exercise and you're not kind of jolted you have the peace that the people can they are persuaded this person has an experience of the Lord and then this is the perfect peace that I just spoke about that when your heart is staged on God you have perfect peace. This is what uh, Paul the Apostle spoke about in Philippians chapter 4 that the peace of God will rule in your heart. That's what we're looking at today and the reason we're looking at this is a man like us, a man of like passion like us that he could have peace in that dire serious perplexing situation if god could do it for him he'll do it for us in jesus name i'm talking to you tonight we're teaching on an unforgettable daniel for a forgotten dream a forgotten dream and then it comes and their lies on the line and unforgettable daniel we divided the message to three parts number one we're looking at decisive prayer for the dreams recovery the dream that was lost the revelation that was lost watch Nebuchadnezzar had that he himself could not recover and now we have people believers that prayed a decisive prayer for the dreams recovery number two is the delightsome praise for divine revelation as they prayed that same night 
They didn't pray for seven days. They didn't pray for 30 days. They just prayed there. And according to the promise of the Lord, that as they were praying, he will show up, he will reveal himself unto them. That while they were yet praying, he will give them the answer, he will give them the solution if they could have answers to their prayers before Christ came. Before the cross, before Calvary, how much more now? We're on this other side of Calvary, on this other side of the cross. When you pray, God will answer. Because of Christ, because of the cross, because of Calvary, because of what he has accomplished for us already, he opened the way to the Father through the veil of his flesh. And if Daniel could have, if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have immediate answer to what they were looking for, understand. Have confidence in the Lord as you pray tonight. I said as you pray tonight. And as you pray for the rest of your life, the Lord will answer in Jesus' name. The light some prayers for divine revelation. Number three is dynamic presentation without any doubtful reservation. After they got the answer, they now came to Nebuchadnezzar and see them as they came, dynamic and see them as they came, sure, and see them as they came, they were going to present the dream, the forgotten dream. And they so presented it, one will study later, in details that Nebuchadnezzar was convinced, he remembered, he recalled when Daniel spoke to him about the dream that this is the dream. I will give you the interpretation. And that, that means then they came in, in in a dynamic way to present the dream without any doubtful preservation. Daniel did not say, am I right? He knew he was right. Daniel did not say, is that so? That will mean that he wasn't sure, but he was very sure. And I pray in our lives, the way the Lord deals with us, that kind of assurance and that kind of certainty will project from us and people will know that we really know what we'll say and we really know what the Lord has done and what the Lord is going to do. Look at number one here. Number one is the decisive prayer for the dream's recovery. Uh, we're reading from, uh, from Daniel chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 16. It tells us that Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Verse 17. In verse 17 it says, Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, his friends. Now, verse 18. In verse 18, that day would desire mercies of the Lord of heaven of the God of heaven. It wasn't by marriage. The works of our hand, a character in our life, and the uncompromising life we have lived cannot qualify us to say, God, you must do this for me because I merit it by the life I live. No, it's by the mercy of God. And so they desired mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows, the friends, should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. And then in verse 19, verse 19, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Let's look at this under three subtitles. We're looking at number one, calm posture of fearlessness despite the declared decree. Number two, common pursuit with friends with deeper devotion. Number three, confident prayer of faith under a deadly 
decree. We're looking at number one there. Number one there is the calm posture of fearlessness despite the declared decree. Uh, already we've read Daniel chapter 2 verses 14 to 16. Uh, let's look at the Psalms. We're looking at Psalm 56, reading from verse 4 there. In Psalm 56 verse 4, it says, In God I will praise His word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. You see, when you have fear, fear in prayer, you'll be forgetting the promises of God you should quote. When you have fear, fear in searching for something, you'll be having doubtful mind. Will I see, will I see it, will I not see it? When you have fear and you want to talk to somebody, you will be internally shaking. And because you're internally shaking, you're not able to directly say and convincingly say everything you want to say. You see, when you have fear, you are progressing, you are proposing, you are planning, you want to get something done, that fear will not allow you to stay calm and to stay connected and to talk convincingly and to do what you ought to do that will bring results. But when you stay your mind on God, when you stay your mind on the Lord himself who has saved you, who has sanctified you, and you know there is no, that there is no hindrance and there is no hurdle and there is no barrier between you and God, you can come boldly and then say what you want to say. That's why the psalmist said, in God, I will praise his word. In God, have I put my trust, I will not fear. That's right. Look at that will. That means to so make up your mind. It's something of the will. It is not something I wish. I don't fear. I think I will try not to be afraid, but you have the will. I will not fear. It is that that gives you confidence and boldness in anything you are called to do and in everything you have to do. It tells us in verse 10, verse 10 of that same chapter, it says in God, when I praise his word, in the Lord I will praise his word. And then it tells us in verse 11, it says in God, have I put my trust? I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. In verse 12, it says, Thy vows are upon me. Thy vows are upon me. O God, I will render praises unto thee. And then in verse 13, verse 13 says, For thou has delivered my soul from death. Hey, look at Daniel. He knew that the decree to die was there. The decree that he'll slay, kill everybody was there. But he said, ah, ah, that will not happen to me and that will not happen to you. I said that will not happen to you because he said, thou hast already delivered my soul. You have marked my day and you have shown me as I go on that I am going to have a long life and this will not kill me. He's still going to live longer than Nebuchadnezzar himself. He's still going to live longer than the son that succeeded him. He's still going to live in the kingdom of Darius. And so he had the confidence that whatever decree they make and whatever plan they are making, he said, thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before the God in the before God in the light of the living? Then in verse 14 he concludes and he says in verse 14 uh, that his life was still preserved and that he was still going to have this life and this was not the time uh, to die in uh, verse 14 uh, verse, oh, sorry up to verse 13 and then we're looking at uh, Hebrews chapter chapter 13 uh, verse 6 Hebrews chapter 13 uh, we're looking at verse 6 it says so that 
we may boldly say, now we have come to this side of the cross. We have come to this side after the, after the salvation and after the cross, after the sacrifice. It comes now to this side of the cross and it says now, we, the believers of the New Testament, may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear, I will not, I will not. You have to make up your mind that God is watching over you. You have to make up your mind that God has the final say in your life. You have to make up your mind that the word of God is truth and the plan of the enemy will come to naught in the believer's life in Jesus' name. Why is the amen so low today? And then it says, it says, I will not fear what man, what man, what man shall do unto me. We're coming to the next point there. That's number two now. Number two is the common pursuit with friends with deeper devotion. Daniel was going to tell Shadak, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were going to unite together in prayer. And as they united together in prayer, they were of the same faith, of the same conviction, of the same consecration, of the same lifestyle. When you say, I have a prayer partner, if you are up and that prayer partner is down, you come to his level, you come to her level. I have a prayer partner. We're going to pray about this difficulty. You have faith. They have fear. Their fear will put your, will put your faith to their level. I have a prayer partner, and the prayer partner is barely safe, doubtful. We don't know whether he's in the kingdom or out of the kingdom. We don't know whether he's, you know, overcoming sin or not. And if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You want to have prayer partner that have the same mind, the same experience, the same faith, and the same per perception of the word of God. And so Daniel now came to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they had the same devotion, deeper devotion than the ordinary floating superficial believers. And now we come to Daniel chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 17. It said, then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, his friends. Look at this. Uh, we need to be at par with what is going on in the community. These people, even Daniel, they didn't know there was any edict. They didn't know there was any threat of death. We should know. If we don't know about the problem, how do we pray against the problem, against the decree? If we do not know about the challenge, how do we get ourselves ready to face that challenge and to solve the problem? But now he came to make that known unto his companions. Then in verse 18, in verse 18 it says that they would desire the mercies of the God of heaven and concerning this secret. It was a secret to the whole nation. A secret to Nebuchadnezzar because he couldn't uh, discover the dream. He couldn't tell the dream. It was a secret to everybody in the whole nation. It's a secret that came from God. And because it came from God, now they will ask God, Lord, you know all secrets and this secret is coming from you and Nebuchadnezzar has forgotten. And because of that, he's furious. Because of that, he wants to kill everybody. Where your children, for our sake, reveal the dream so that we will not perish and the people of um, Babylon who were the wise men of Babylon that they too should not die and so it says that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows, his friends, should not perish with the rest of the wise men of 
Babylon. And now, when you look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, reading from verse 30, it's talking about when we unite together in prayer. We have the same mind, we have the same heart, we have the same faith, we have the same goal, we have the same passion. And because of that, we unite together to get this answer from the Lord. It says, how would one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shot them? them up. It's talking about the power of united effort, united love, united skill, united purpose, united prayer that one can put ten, can put a thousand, ten thousand, two, can put a thousand to flight and two united together can put ten thousand to flight. We're looking at the New Testament promise in Matthew chapter 18, reading from verse 18. In uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Give me a good amen there. Jesus said, even you as a believer alone by yourself, whatsoever you bind on earth, what does that mean? You can bind that decree of Nebuchadnezzar, you can bind that cause, you can bind that personality behind premature death and Nebuchadnezzar said, all of you will die and then you can say no to that. If you want to say no to that, how do you say no? God confirm it in heaven in Jesus' name. It says, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then verse 19, and again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. Many times we do not uh, analyze the promise of God. Many times we do not properly interpret the promise of God. It says anything. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, they ask, they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. It will be done. I said it will be done. Even when the fire is burning outside and the rain is pouring down, stormy rain outside, if you calmly, like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, stay in there and you join your faith together and you say that thing shall stop, what will happen? It will stop. The Lord answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Look at number three now. Number three, confident prayer of faith under a deadly decree. The confident prayer they prayed. They are not saying, oh God, if it's your will, it's his will that those people will not perish. Is not interested in the death even of the wicked. It's his will. It, it, this is your will that will perish not. Of course, you're not going to perish. You're not going to perish under the anger and the fury and the frustration of Nebuchadnezzar. If you're going to die, it will be God's time for God's purpose. When your mansion is ready and then you say, Bye-bye, I'm going to a better accommodation. Somebody help me shout amen. amen. And so they had confident praying. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 17. It says that Daniel went to his house, and he made the thing known to Ananiah and Mishael and Azariah, his companions. Verse 18, in verse 18 it says that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven at concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows should not 
perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Verse 19, in verse 19, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Now, uh, for us, for the secret that the king is looking for, that our families are looking for, that uh, our companions are looking for, the secret that we ourselves, that we're, li that we're looking for, we're searching and we say, Lord, do this for me, do this for me. And then revelation comes to us. Can I tell you, number one, we must be saved and be assured of our salvation. Not they say, I am saved. No. Not they say, once I am saved, I'm saved forever. No. That's a doctrine on the other side. This is something practical. And this is something personal. There is no condemnation in the heart because you are not walking in the flesh. You are walking after the Spirit. And the Spirit of God is bearing witness with your heart. Not somebody pumping you up and encouraging you. You've been coming to church for a long time, but now you are saved. Don't doubt. You are saved. Not, not that one. This is the Spirit of God bearing witness in your heart that the grace of God has come to you. And that grace that appeared to you brought salvation and it teaches you to deny all ungodliness and worldly laws and is helping you the grace of God helping you to live soberly righteously and godly in this present world then with that confidence you can come to the Lord and say Lord I'm your child I know it by the life I live I know it by the faith I have I know it by the weakness of the Spirit of God in me I know it by the victory over sin that you give me and now you go to the Lord with confidence and you pray and the Lord will answer look at James chapter 1 we're reading from verse 16 verse 6 it says but let him ask in faith Nothing wavering as Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were kneeling down as they were praying. Nothing else was coming to their heart. What if God does not answer? What if we perish? What if this? What? There was no if in their heart because it was the prayer of faith. But let him ask in faith, nothing will bring. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and toss. He prayed the prayer of faith. We're looking at Mark chapter 11, and we're looking at verse 22. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And Jesus answering says unto them, have faith in God. The God that never fails. Have faith in God. The God that loves you so much, He doesn't want you to perish with the Gentiles, with the pagans, with the Babylonians. Have faith in God. The God who has promised that call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you never knew. That God that invited you to pray and told you that was going to answer, have faith in God. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, therefore I say unto you, I say unto you, you must always understand when you read the promise of God, this is what God is saying unto me. The God that cannot fail. This is what God is saying to me. And when you know it like that, that this is what the Lord is saying unto you, you will have your answer. A perfect answer. It says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. And I will have them. And the church will have them. The Lord will answer our prayer. Isaiah chapter 65. And I'm reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 65. Reading from verse 24. And it shall come to pass in your own day. It shall come to pass at your own time. It shall come to pass when you pray. Amen. 
and it shall come to pass that before they call before they call before they call i will answer he knows what's in our heart he knows our desire he knows our petition even before we open our mouth he said i'm ready go on talking i'm going to answer your prayer and while they are yet speaking i will hear while they are yet speaking it will hear now we come to point uh, number two in point number two is that the light some praise for divine revelation the light some praise for divine revelation we're well, looking at daniel chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 20 here in daniel chapter 2 verse 20 daniel answered and said blessed be the name of god forever and ever for wisdom and might are his he didn't rush out because you know some people then in haste in a hurry will be looking nobody has got this answer and then we we'll pray to the Lord and the Lord gave us uh, this answer and uh, Nebuchadnezzar is waiting impatiently he wants the answer now why are we going to hurry no other person has uh, this secret and this is what the Lord has specially revealed with divine favor and so will not rush out will give glory to God will praise the name of the Lord will we'll shout his praise because of what he has done and it says and Daniel uh, answered and said blessed be the name of God God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. Verse 21. In verse 21, and he changes times and see and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. Verse 22. In verse 22, he revealeth the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and uh, he and the light dwelleth within. Verse 23. In verse 23, son, uh, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given the wisdom and might, and has, uh, who has given me wisdom and might, and he, you have made known unto me now what we desired of thee for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter we're dividing this three parts number one perpetual praise to god for his wisdom and might number two present praise to god for his will and uh, over mankind and number three personal praise to god for his gift and wisdom a, a gift of wisdom and might number one is the perpetual per, perpetual praise to god that every time every time perpetually we're praising god for his wisdom and for his might in uh, daniel chapter 2 again verse 20 it said daniel answered and said blessed be the name of god forever and ever from generation to generation what well, that's why it's perpetual for wisdom and might are his in first kings chapter 8 reading from verse 56 this is the reason why we're praising god this is the reason why you ought to praise god because he makes a promise and then he fulfills the promise says blessed be the lord that has given rest unto his people israel according to all that he promised according to all that he promised no one has failed it says there has not there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of moses his servant he said because god fails not 
and he fulfills his promise all the promises he has made and the one we're claiming now and the one we're standing on now is fulfilling that as well he has not disappointed the people who came before us and the people of the present day is not going to disappoint anyone and also the coming the uh, the people of the next generation is still going to bless them because of that perpetually we are praising the lord look at number two here number two here of its uh, present praise to god for his will over mankind his will over mankind it tells us in daniel chapter 2 reading from verse 21 and it changes the times and the seasons and he removeth kings and setteth up kings that is all the kings who are reigning all the kings who are ruling those who ruled in the past even nebuchadnezzar he placed him there even Belshazzar, he placed him even darius he placed him even cyrus he placed him there god says is the one in charge and is in control over mankind so that's why the children of god are not perplexed and they are not their hearts are not palpitating and their lives are not up and down and they are not bothered about this is going to happen who will be there who will be there the man of god's choice will be there no worry in your heart no anxiety in your heart this is happening now because of that that's what they say that's happening now because of that and then people are wondering how shall we send our children to school if this person comes in how shall we have enough to eat if this person comes in how shall we practice our faith if this one comes in god is in charge in our country here god is in charge in all the continent of Africa, God is in charge. That's why you are calm. Don't get into discussion with those who do not know God. Don't stand on the street corner discussing with the people that do not know that God is overall over the whole of mankind. And don't be arguing in your home. You're eating, and then somebody brings up, look at this, look at this, and it's within one month now this will happen, that will happen. Why don't you enjoy your food and leave all that in the hands of God? And God will do the best for our country. Because it says, He changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings, He does, and setteth up kings, He does, to give, He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding look at jeremiah we're looking at uh, jeremiah chapter 27 and we're looking at verse 5 jeremiah chapter 27 reading from verse 5 i have made the earth the man and the beast that are upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and i have given it to whom it seemed meet unto me he said is the one that does that he said i created the earth and all the nations of the earth and your country and my country our country that he created everything and then it says and i have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me so we're not going to have any sleepless night who will be there who will be there when he comes well we know no sleepless night no anxiety and no discussion that will jolt us we're believers in god and god has said he will give it to whosoever seems right unto him he will do it we're looking at psalm 75 and we're reading from verse 6 in psalm 75 verse 6 for promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south look at verse 7 verse 7 says but god 
is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. Amen. We're coming to number three here. Number three, we're looking at personal praise to God for his gift of wisdom and might. In Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 22, Daniel chapter 2, we're looking at verse 22, he revealed the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. In verse 23, it says, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee and for thou has now made known unto us the king's matters. Daniel praised the Lord and his friends praised the Lord with him because God, God alone, that could reveal secrets and could give wisdom and might to anyone, he has revealed the secret unto them. And when it comes to your turn, that you know a secret that the philosophers of the world, the coaches in the world, and the trainers of the world, and the investigators of the world could not reveal unto you. And then you go to God, everything belongs to him. Wisdom, might, secrets, all belong to him. He will reveal unto you. No secret will perplex your life. No secret will give you high blood pressure. That you are and sleepless nights. That you are just there on the bed. You cannot sleep because there is something you don't know. You are wondering about something. How will this affect my life and my family? Rest your mind. He reveal that secret to you. We're looking at Psalm 119 verse 164. Psalm 119, verse 164, it says, Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. And then in verse 165, great peace a day which love thy love, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing will jolt you. Nothing will confuse you. Nothing will embarrass you because your mind is stayed on him. And great peace of day which love thy law. And nothing, nothing, and nothing shall offend them. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 25. Matthew 11, verse 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Babes in Christ, new uh, children, newborn children in Christ. In your simplicity of mind, you know God is your father now and he has all the secrets in his hand. And when you ask him, he will reveal these things unto babes in Jesus' name. And look at verse 26 there. In verse 26, even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. Verse 27, verse 27 says, says, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save except the Son, and he to whom, whomsoever the Son will reveal him. I pray that when your time comes, there will be no embarrassing silence from heaven in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three is the dynamic presentation without any doubtful reservation. You know, when you think you know something, 
And then you now come to the person that had the dream originally. And you are to appear before him, and you come, and you look at his face. He's still a little bit angry, and he's still wondering, Daniel, you have come. Can you tell me the district? Do you know for a certainty that you have the secret if you didn't know who your God is? If you didn't know the revelation of the Heavenly Father? If you didn't have the assurance of faith, you'll be jolted a little, but not Daniel. No doubtful reservation. Everything that he had heard, that he had known, he knew. This is the truth. Dynamic presentation without any doubtful reservation. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 24. In Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 24, Therefore Daniel went in unto Ariel, whom the king had ordained to destroy, to kill, to slay, the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. If your life could be a source of preservation to other people, those who should have died, those who should have perished, your life, your knowledge, your wisdom, your vision, your passion brings life unto them. Those who are under the fear of death, and a fear of death because of sickness, or fear of death because of the harassment of the devil, or fear of death because of a secret decree against their lives. And then you as a believer saved, sanctified, and baptized in the Holy Ghost, you can come and your life could become a preservative for the people that should have died. I pray the Lord will so use your life. He said, destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, number one is the fearless Daniel before the frightened warrior king. Number two is the faithful declaration of future worsening kingdoms. Number three is the firm decree of the foremost wise king, the king of heaven. We're looking at number one. Number one is the fearless Daniel before the frightened warrior king. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2 again and we're reading from verse 25 now. In verse 25 it says, then Ariel brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said thus unto him, unto the king, I have found a man. I have found a man. I have found a man. I pray at a time when the world has confusion, when your world has confusion, and when uh, the people around you, when they are perplexed because they do not have solution to the problems confronting them, I pray they will find you that you can supply the answer. When they're looking for a woman, that a woman of God that can do this, I pray they will find you in Jesus' name. I have found a man of the captives of Judah. Don't worry about what they say, you know, captive of Judah, unemployed person, somebody from that unknown tribe, somebody from that port. Don't worry about that. It is what you have that will bring you before the king. And it is what you know that will bring you before the king. Who is that? Who is that? Well, is that lowly fellow there? Is that uneducated person there? Don't worry about that. It is what you have. It is what you know that will bring you before the king. Once you have the solution, the solution to the problems of this life, what way you came from and your stature and all, whatever, all that will not matter. I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. We're looking at verse 26. In verse 26, it says, The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, Art thou able 
to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Daniel, are you sure you have the solution to this problem? A national problem. Are you sure you have solution to this a problem that perplexed everybody? That even me, that I had the dream I had forgotten. Are you sure that you are able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Verse 27, in verse 27, then Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men and the astrologers and the magicians and the soothsayers show unto the king. Look at uh, chapter 21 of uh, Luke. Luke chapter 21, we're reading from verse 24. In Luke 21, 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What's the relationship of that? What, what we're learning. The dream is about the kingdoms of the Gentile world. And those uh, Gentile worlds, they rule, another one will come, another one will come, another one will come until the times of the Gentiles be over. And so this dream actually stretches between from the time of Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon an empire, an emperor and then it goes on to the Middle Persian Empire that is another kingdom that will fall and then the Grecian Empire will rise up that will fall until the time of the Romans and all those kingdoms four of them all those kingdoms, one after the other, all those kingdoms in a large expanse from that time before Christ came until Christ came and until the second coming when it will thrash and crush and destroy all those kingdoms and then the stone will become a mighty mountain all over the world that Jesus will be the king of kings and the king and the lord of lords and the king of the whole universe that's the dream and that's how it spanned such a large period until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled look at verse 26 in verse 26 men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and yet Daniel came in without any fear without any timidity and without any fright at all and without any doubt what if I miss it look at Acts chapter 18 and I'm reading from verse 9 Acts chapter 18 verse 9 then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision be not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace. The Lord had sent him with the message of the gospel to the Gentile world. And when he was at Corinth and appeared that, you know, things were rough, the Lord assured him, be not afraid. The same thing the Lord is saying to us, anywhere he sends us, and whatever he sends us to do, whatever we see, the sight that dazzles, and the things that might even torment the heart of the average man or average woman, the Lord is saying, be not afraid, I'm backing you up. I sent you and I told you to proclaim the watch of the gospel to the people you are meeting. Be not afraid, but speak. Speak loud, speak convincingly, speak from all your heart and hold not thy peace. In verse 10, verse 10 says, for I am with thee. No man shall set on thee to hurt thee. Amen. When you know that, you'll go to your office confidently. When you know that, you live in your community confidently. When you know that, you will preach the gospel without fear 
and without fright anytime anywhere because it says i have much people in this city then in verse 11 in verse 11 and he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of god among them we're looking at number two here number two here is a faithful declaration on future worsening kingdoms now he's going to tell the dream and the dream is going to tell about the kingdoms of the earth from one to the other from the other to the next one from the next one to the final one before christ will come and this is about the kingdoms of the world that will be going from bad to worse and worse to worse and worse to the worst it tells us in daniel chapter 2 reading from verse 28 daniel chapter 2 we're reading from verse 28 but there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets do not be afraid or ashamed to declare the, that a God exists anywhere you are and you know because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth whether they are Jews or Gentiles do not be ashamed and here uh, Daniel was not ashamed he said but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. The dream was not just for the days, for the time, for the period when Nebuchadnezzar was alive. It will be for the latter days, the dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are these. 